may or may not know this, but I absolutely love Greece. How much, you ask? So much so that I've been there six times in the last seven years. Greece to me is the only place that not only strikes every single chord I want played in my heart, but it does so more resonantly than any other country I've ever gotten to experience. The powerful Mediterranean sun, ridiculously simple yet fresh food, the deep oceanic blues contrasting with the bright whites, every single moment in Greece is a moment where I'm truly the happiest version of myself. Hell, even the Greeks think I'm one of them. A huge compliment, mind you, but I always find myself apologizing for not understanding a single word that they say to me. If Haristo, anyway. If you've never been, the best way I can describe its luster is by telling you its charm lies and how wild it is. How it is Europe technically, but it doesn't feel like traditional cute Europe. How the Greek culture is so distinct from anything else that it's easy to imagine the ancient times from any desolate beach or simply sailing its seas. My profound love affair with Greece started with my initial visit in 2015, and the very first island I stepped foot on was Zakynthos. It was the first time I traveled outside the US all alone, the beginning of a form of travel that as many of you know, I prefer and continue to this day. So in a sense, you can say, this island is where Mitchell Travels as you know it today began. What drew me to the island were the things that you find online. What kept me coming back were its people. The ease at which I could create a bond with locals that on the surface was fleeting, but endured year after year. Almost as if we had hit the pause button on life from the time my flight departed until the time my return leg had landed. So this story is not about pretty beaches. It's about returning to friends and memories on an island so far it's so near to my heart. So then, Zakynthos, what should you know? First off, and this is a big one, it's in the Ionian Sea, meaning it's on Greece's western coast facing Italy. Now that's important because it's not in the same route as your typical go-to Greek islands like Santorini. No, no, that's in the Cyclades. Way different vibes and much easier to navigate to and fro. To get to Zakynthos from Athens, the smartest option would be a 45-minute flight. It's either that, or an existential crisis-inducing 5-hour bus plus ferry option along the mainland. There's a clear winner here, so don't be stupid and book ahead. Most of the action on the island will be found on its eastern coast, so that's where you should end up staying unless you hate human contact. I like to stay close to Zante. That's the name locals give the island's main town that bears its name. More on that later, but for now, just know that you can't go wrong with their Argasi, Alicanas, or Planos. Another thing you should keep in mind is that all those postcards of Greece with the barren islands and smooth white buildings, yeah, you won't find any of that here. Again, that's the Cyclades. The Ionians were heavily influenced by the Venetians during their time here, so instead of white, you see stone and warm colors. Not as cool, admittedly, but it works. What you'll also notice is how lush this island is. There are actual trees here, like green trees and shrubs. That's because it rains here in the winter, creating some fertile ground. You mix the green with the stark white cliffs, and well, you got something special. But when the lights go off on the high season, and that last British girl pukes outside a beachside bar, there's another industry that keeps Zakynthos busy and afloat through the rainy months. Driving through the Zakynthian countryside, you'll notice field after field of olive trees. Olive oil is the main agricultural product of Zakynthos, and its cultivation and production has been a tradition for hundreds of years. With roughly 8,500 family farms, it's hard not to find one of these fields sprinkled about. And I'll tell you this, a reposeful afternoon stroll amidst these ancient trees, accentuated by a score of hidden cicadas, is a simple pleasure that's kept a secret from the island's uninitiated.
Zante, otherwise known as Zakynthos Town. It's central, home to the most locals, and very much the beating heart of the island. The town isn't exactly some large, intricate city filled with a bunch of things to do, but neither are most towns on Greek islands anyway. That's just never really the point. But Zante offers the port, and with any port comes a development that attracts good restaurants, bars, and more importantly, the people that those places employ. People usually from a nearby village, Athens, or in some cases, another EU nation altogether. So cheers. So cheers. Nice vacation. Thank you. <laughs> it's a nice vacation and to these pink butt plug looking straws or whatever this is. I, I can't love get enough of those. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get enough of those. It's my morning routine. Sarah and I go back a few years to my very first trip to Zakynthos. We have a friendship that seems to never go out of style, as time and again, summer after summer, I catch up with my favorite Belgian expat to chat about life and how it's treating us during the spaces in between. Sarah is my homecoming, a route left growing on an island where mentally, I'm never too far. From the first time I ever came to this island, I envied anyone who lived here. Why is that? I mean, it's paradise. Look at it. It's, it's freaking beautiful. I mean, look, I just, I wish I was living here at least for like three months out of the year. Yeah, three months is enough. <laughs> 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 like, you're coming to the peak season. Like, yes, sunny days and everything. Everything beautiful, blue sea, uh, beaches. You go to the beach every day, but it's not the reality. Do you think Zakynthos is an island paradise? Uh, from like, if I see it from the nature way, yes, I love it. Uh, nature is beautiful. The sea, if you are close to the sea, you're relaxed. I can tell it by myself. I've, I've always come when it's just absolutely gorgeous outside and, and you know, it just really is wonderful here. I mean, What's the worst part of living in Zakynthos? There are some downsides as well. Like, it's not easy to be a part of a small community because people, they, they are looking what you're doing and they're criticizing a lot. They're nosy. Yeah, very nosy. <laughs> it, mu it must be interesting because it, a lot of these islands become transient communities. You know, people come, they go within the week. Is it hard to make friends here? Not really, because we don't interact that much with the tourists. Like, if you are local, you find local people to befriend. And right. we're like, I feel like Greek people, because I'm not from Greece, you know, uh, I feel Greek people have great hospitality and they are very honest with each other. So if you make friends, you know that you make good friends. Right. The Greeks embrace you as a foreigner coming to to work and to reside here. Uh, yes, not everybody, but I didn't have that much of difficulties. And yeah, you, you find good people and bad people everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, I was lucky to find good people around me. So a lot of people make the mistake of coming to Laganas. Yeah. Yeah, that's a mistake. <laughs> Uh, probably. Oh, Laganas. What can I tell you about this little coastal town aside from the fact that it is the physical manifestation of all things ratchet? At the intersection of gonorrhea and chlamydia, you'll find Laganas, a place where teenage Brits and Serbs come to get obliterated, yell alongside their shirtless mates, peacock their supremacy with digital punching bags, lose their heels, cry their tomato red faces over getting dumped by text, and ultimately, finding love with their summer fling for a solid five minutes. Look at them go, like a herd of pink bison. Behold Laganas, Love Island incarnate. Um, 
it has its own flavor, I need to say. Uh, not my flavor. Like, uh, it's more for young people and yeah. party hard and, you know, the English kind of <laughs> yeah. music. You should avoid Laganas like the plague, basically. There are some locals that enjoy, like, the tourism there. They find attractive girls or boys, it depends. Right. And they're having fun, but that's what they ask for. Right, like, right. They kind of go in for a specific reason to hunt. Yes. Yeah, hunting that. season, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that is like a sport. We all have our visions of beauty in nature of an idyllic landscape that enthralls our eyes and satisfies our senses. Every now and then, however, we find common ground and an understanding that certain places are universally extraordinary. The stuff of postcards and countless screensavers. The kind of image you stare into and wish you could be immediately transported over there from your lifeless cubicle or tiny apartment. That screensaver can be found tucked in a corner on the western coast of Zakynthos, the hidden portrait that is the Navajo Shipwreck Beach. From Zante Town, the road to Navaggio takes you an hour through the hills and villages of Zakynthos. Sure, it might not be the shortest drive, but thankfully the ever-changing altitudes and views are plenty to keep you visually entertained. Also, there's some strategic roadside stops for you to indulge in if 50-odd minutes of continuous driving is too much for you. So sit back and enjoy the view. Further up the island, the landscape becomes more desolate with the overwhelming feeling of altitude and the expansive oceans that engulf it. But all of that is mute once you reach your destination. Perched up at some points up to a thousand feet over the beach, the Navaggio viewpoint offers perhaps some of the most beautifully unique views you'll find anywhere on Earth. The trail past the lookout is tricky and unpaved, making this hike an apprehensive walk amongst unsteady ridges and ever-shifting clay with chipped limestones. Almost nature's way of telling you you can't have all of your focus on this immaculate portrait. But once you find your spot, your perfect angle, you settle your nerves as close as comfortable to an otherwise lethal yet glorious thousand-foot plunge. As a man who used to be terrified of heights, I can tell you my palms couldn't be sweatier, but my eyes, they couldn't be happier. For those of you wondering how it's like down at the actual beach, well, all I can say is, the real grandeur of this beach can be found up above the battering winds, a few feet from death, overlooking these jagged white cliffs, harnessed by the lightest blue waters of the Ionian Sea. It's my final morning here, and I pose myself a simple question. What is being in Zakynthos without enjoying it on a boat? Answer? Missing out on life. And since I'm not the type to shy away from leisurely amusement, I've decided to rent a tiny little boat for the afternoon. From Laganas Beach you can find a fellow who will rent you a tiny little boat for about 80 euros for 3 hours. Now keep in mind that this boat shouldn't have more than 4 slimmish people on it. So much like a European elevator, it's not thick-friendly. But that won't be an issue for me, since, as per the norm, 
I'm riding solo today. With an Aperol spritz in the bay ahead of me, I set my sights on the Cary Caves, zooming past a certain reptilian-looking Marathonisi Island. Now it's worth noting that I've never, and I truly mean never, driven a boat of any kind alone until this moment. So it'd be accurate to say, I'm YOLOing this entire thing. And for what it's worth, it takes some stones to drive a toy boat on these choppy waters having had more experience in the field of making clay pots than this. Experience or not, nothing would have stopped me from doing this. This type of experience for me is unquantifiable. As the hours pass with each dive into the jade blue Ionian waters along the way, I head to the furthest point allowed for these seesawing souped up kayaks, the Cary Caves. And this is where the boat ride really turns into a visual mindfuck. The patented Zakynthian screensaver landscape. The type of exotic beach porn that would make Los LeBlanc cream his board shorts and crash yet another drone. If you stay quiet, you can actually hear the hashtags in the air. Hashtag Lost Paradise. Hashtag Take Me Back. Hashtag Good Vibes Only. Sailing under the cliffs with hollowed out archways, the tiny white pebbly beaches in the coves. Today is a day salted to perfection under the endless Greek sun. You know, I genuinely hate doing sort of these confessionals to the camera at the moment, in the place that I'm covering. I find it a little bit cheesy and kind of overplayed, but when it comes to this, to this moment, it's hard to really express through voiceover and B-roll exactly what I'm feeling driving this boat through these choppy waters, through the little caves and inlets in Zakynthos. So I don't care how cheesy it is. I don't care if I'm holding this mic up. I want you to see the expression in my face and hear it come out of my mouth right now. It's honestly one of the great experiences of my life. That simple. is everywhere I've been, everything I've felt, every person I've met. To you, this island may just be a set of beaches and a good time, but to me, what Zakynthos means is the definition of why I took off to travel this world for oh so many years. In my mind, the apex of travel is when you can leave part of yourself in any given place and come back to find that those pieces have been nurtured by the experiences you cultivated with those you met along the way. When you find that home far away, it's no longer just a pin on a map, because that pin pushes in deeper. And my deepest pin can be found on Zakynthos. Zakynthos.